viernes más con el Star Citizen Live que en esta ocasión pues van a hacer un especial del Ship Showdown vamos a ver qué se están contando Bill Wynn uh, and they'll be playing for prizes awarded at the end of the show so let's go ahead and meet our distinguished panel of people uh, from the different departments of Star Citizen here we go Not everybody, but we got four departments here. We are going to just start from the what is it? The left and go to the to the right here. Uh, Yogi, who are you? What team are you playing for? And what do you do for Star Citizen? So my name is Yogi. I'm part of the vehicle uh, experience team, and yeah, I'm a programmer. Yes, you're a programmer. And what what does the vehicle experience team do? Um, we're um, Improving existing aspect. Bueno, este, este, este tipo ya sabéis que, que bueno, es un programador de, del equipo de experiencia vehicular y entre otras cosas es piloto ultraligero, así que es un, es una buen, es un buen aporte para Star Citizen, ¿no? Be used in the day-to-day -day lives of the citizens and also it's kind of fun we look at the ships during reviews and see like try to envision ourselves inside this space bueno está diciendo que este es el tipo de narrativa que muchas veces eh, la narrativa también influye en lo que es el nombre de una nave o o también pues en, en colocar una nave en el verso a través de la narrativa no Next, Elwin, tell us who you are and what you do What up, homies? I'm Elwin. I'm the uh, associate vehicle art director representing the vehicle content team. And what we do is we essentially build the vehicles that you guys all love. Uh, part of our team hooks everything up so that you can fly these things. And then the last part of our team sets it up so that you can shoot each other out of the sky. All right. And last but certainly not least, uh, uh, no stranger to the program, but he hasn't been around in a while. Tyler, who are you and what do you do? Hi, everybody. Tyler or Zylo. Uh, I manage the community team, and our main focus is acting as a metaphorical punching bag. Wait, sorry, wrong notes. Hold on. Yeah, we provide any uh, comlinks, messaging, such as monthly reports, Q&As, AMAs, infographics. Um, we created things like the Welcome Hub, the guide system, uh, feedback, sentiment tracking, roadmap for roadmaps, you name it. We're here to support the community and the uh, development team as well. All right. And you know, and bueno, pues eh, este tipo de aquí está en representación del equipo de vehículos, que es el que se dedica a entregarnos las naves, a hacernos las naves, ¿no? Y que las podamos volar, etcétera. El equipo, no, el solo, claro. Y este sería pues el encargado de, de la comunidad, todo lo que tiene que ver con Roma, feedback, etcétera. All right. So basically, uh, we, well, the, we spent, so how this, this contest worked is that we, had, we took submissions from the community for about two weeks, I think, if I'm... Correct me if I'm wrong here. Uh, people submitted all kinds of stuff. What did, what did they submit? Uh, everything that you could possibly imagine. Songs, Legos, Play-Doh. Um, <laughs> a lot of 3D models this year. More 3D printed models than last year. Which is cool, because I think just the technology behind it is advancing and more people are... Bueno, dice que hay... Eh, aquí se va a decidir, pues, o votar las, las creaciones, ¿no? De, de la gente y demás. Para, para que den esos premios que habían prometido de... De naves LT y alocanadores. Creo que ya... Una de ellas una 600, me parece, a los, a los primeros, entre otras naves. Creo que al final también va a dar una, unas 8 Prospector a, al, al top 10. Y, y bueno, pues que al final pues han, envi han enviado cantidad de creaciones, desde canciones hasta figuritas de Lego, hasta... Eh, bueno, pues ya habéis visto cuadros, piezas de arte, de, de cosas con impresoras 3D y demás, ¿no? Está avanzando mucho esa tecnología, están comentando. Uh, so, for example, the 890 Jump got in on sheer number of submissions. While none of them were as high as some of the top contenders, if you sort by top, but there was something like 60 or 70 890 Jump submissions, and so we counted those. Um, it's one of the reasons, I don't know if Red Lear is watching, but Gary in the, in the Argo almost made it in, almost made it in, but there was just not enough posts, and when we actually mapped it all out. Um, and then, of course, also quality of submission mattered as well. So we had a pretty big panel of judges, and we voted. Um, and so if something was just absolutely stellar, somebody went above and beyond, like the Drake Cutlass Black song, um, I mean, that gentleman almost secured the Cutlass Black on his own, but, you know. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, it's uh, it's safe to say the Cutlass has a wonderful constituency behind it, and it's I think it could, it, my personal opinion, I think it's going to be the dark horse contender this year, but uh, we will get into that uh, momentarily. So right now on the website, uh, you 
you can visit robertspaceindustries.com and vote. Bueno, eh, está comentando un poco de que ahora se puede votar en la página de Robles Space y además de que a la hora de escoger las naves, pues que hubo como unas 60, eh, son unos 60 envíos de, de 890 y demás, que bueno, que para que esas naves, para que estas naves van aquí no basta con solo una o con la calidad, de, o sea, que tiene mucho que ver también la calidad de los envíos y, y que haya una cantidad, que haya más gente que envíe más cosas de, de una nave para que salga seleccionada en, en lo que es el ship shutdown. Day, you may not want to vote immediately. Uh, you may want to listen to uh, what they have to say, uh, what ship that they are champion, championing. Uh, if you if you want if you want them to vote, maybe they can sway your vote. Maybe they won't. Who knows? You know, I, uh, can anything beat the Carrick? Let's uh, we, we're 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 going to find out right there. So let's go ahead and get started with our very first uh, uh, ship showdown of the of the uh, of the show. Bueno, están hablando de unas cosas de, dices, cuando puede algo reventar la garra, pues ya veremos, ¿no? And voting is now live in the chat. Uh, Yogi, uh, we're going to start with you in the first position here. What should win? Carrick or the Reclaimer? So I think, I think the Reclaimer should win. Um, it's a big, bulky ship, and it has this industrial used vibe around it. And um, I was especially, like, uh, taking up... Um, taking um another part but like, i love the kitchen area like the like recreational area in there you can just sit down and have a drink with your friends so it's it just feels very alive and this is why i think the uh, reclaimer should win really you, you, right out the gate you win against the cleric Bold man, man. Bold, bold strategy, Cotton. We'll see if it pays off. Well, uh, well dice Carrick que básicamente or que le mola a Reclaimer, porque puedes estar I'm simplemente really sentado ahí tomando tal con tus colegas y demás. Uh, uh, I, I have to say the Carrick, I, as much as I love the Reclaimer and the impact it has when you approach it on a landing pad and like just see it looming over you, which is like kind of an experience that I think is a bit unique to Star Citizen. The Carrick, for me, embodies a bit of my dream of the Star Citizen experience. It It's about getting out there and exploring. It has a little bit of everything in a really nice way. So it kind of has that that mission flexibility that I look for in a ship. And it's it's real pretty. Okay. Elwin. So I agree with the things that, that Yogi likes about the Reclaimer. And I think that from an artistic standpoint, I definitely like the Reclaimer better. It has some very beautiful interiors and i like sort of the uh mineral processing section on the inside mm. but at the end of the day from a gameplay standpoint i just think the carrick is star citizen bueno dice que dice este que que bueno eh, que el reclaimer aparte, aparte de que tenga un diseño espectacular y todo eso y tal que desde un punto de vista de gameplay eh, la carrack es definitivamente star citizen que ahora mismo se puede hacer muchísimas cosas ¿no? en la carrack at standpoint <laughs> I've had a lot of fun with the carrack so I gotta go with the carrack hey, Tyler is it gonna be a, is it gonna be a tie or is it gonna be a win let me say that I still hear Gib Carrick in my dreams um, with the amount of Gibbs that happened in the gibboning the Carrick earned it it's gotta be the Carrick It's got to be the Carrick. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Right. So we we have so we have Yogi is the only standout. Uh, uh, you know, sticking to his guns or his salvaging beams, as the case may be, uh, voting for the voting for the uh, reclaimer. Uh, we we asked you to pick who would win ahead of time, so that you could not be influenced by the voting that's going on down below. Uh, Yogi, who did you pick would win? No, I actually picked Garrick uh, because of <laughs> <laughs> because of Kip Garrick. There's so much you traitor. Fuss about dice that. que en realidad dice que en realidad el único que defendía la la reclaimer dice que en realidad que, que a quién seleccionó para para que siguiera adelante dice que en realidad escogió la carra que el cabrón. <laughs> All right, well, who, who 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 did you predict would win? The Carrick. Carrick. Elwin. Carrick. Carrick. Tyler. Carrick. And I don't think that's any surprise looking at the voting that was going on live. Uh, the Carrick uh, ran away with it, uh, almost a two to, th two to one uh, advantage there. Uh, no surprise there. So we are going to move on to our next. Oh, where's my button here? I've got too many things to, to go on. So we're going to move on to our next uh, battle. The day two, the Drake Caterpillar versus the uh, Miss Prospector. So, Will, we're going to start with you. Oh, geez. Caterpillar Prospector, who wins? Uh, I, I say prospector. Uh, I think just the mining experience that we have coming on and, and like the prospector, it's kind of that, that unitasker, but really nicely 
built for it of um you know sitting there in an asteroid belt riding being a laser jockey is i think just an excellent experience the the caterpillar bueno, dice que estar ahí, que dice que la Prospector, entre la Prospector de la carrera y la Prospector, porque estar ahí sentado con, en un asteroide, ¿no? Posado en un asteroide mirando, que es una buena experiencia. Into that, putting on some music, heading out into the black and mining, I gotta give it to the Prospector. You, you know, El, when his team made the Caterpillar, right? He's, he's right there next to you. Yeah, it's, a, it's an absolutely fantastic ship. Right. And the Caterpillar won last year's ship showdown. The inaugural ship showdown, yeah. the Caterpillar was the surprise, at least it was for me, it was a surprise winner at the end of that. Uh, Elwin, what's your pick? Who should win? <laughs> Who should win? should win? Okay, so yes, you already let everybody know I actually did work on the Caterpillar. Um, but I actually think the Prospector should win. Oh. And the reason for that, that, that is because I like big lasers. And this one has a giant one. Sin motivo es porque le gustan los láseres grandes y ya está. Madre mía. It has to be the thing with the big laser. Um, I also think that the canopy is really, really nice in this ship. Um, one of the best, I think, actually for... The... También dice que, que piensa que la cabina es una de las mejores eh, en el juego. Some of the interior looks of some later ships. So, I, yeah, I think it's a great ship. It's a great little sort of starter mining ship. So I go with the Prospector. Right. Tyler. I just want to say that I'm disappointed because I, I will first say, yes, I think that the Prospector should win as well. And it looks like, according to Twitch chat, they're voting for that as well. But why didn't you turn out and vote when, the, when it mattered most? Um, I'm a fan of mining. Cargo gameplay is great, but I'm a fan of mining. Just like Elwin said, the canopy of the Prospector, I think, is, provides gorgeous views. Um, yeah, that's right. the one for me. Yogi? Yeah, I'm also with the Prospector. Hey, There's this thing about the ship, like you can you can stand next to the pilot in the canopy, enjoy the view, and just uh, be really like judgmental about the pilot, telling them, oh yeah, that's not going to work out, and so on. And uh, it's great that you can do that on that ship, just standing next to the pilot yeah. and enjoying the view. Um, yeah, it just feels very alive to me. Um, so yeah, I would say the uh, uh, the, um, <clears throat> the prospector should win this this round. Al final, eh, parece que pesa muchísimo la cabina de la prospector para las decisiones que están tomando. Y... Vote se, yes. Se están votando también en el chat, por lo que veo. The caterpillar crushed. So, what's the disparity here? I don't know, but I, I will say that we get points if we're right. I mean, right? Someone someone should chat, win. So. Uh, uh, will uh, win. And should win. You know, for for this contest, not for what happened yesterday. So, Yogi, who? Did, <laughs> uh, so actually, so Will, Will, who did you pick? Should win, or would win? Win would. Sorry. Oh man. <laughs> did you pick? Pick? What uh, come back to me. Nope. I have to look at my thing. No, nope. everybody, everybody picked Caterpillar. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's we'll why I said, all of you, yeah. all of you hedged your bets. All of you. It's not too late. Said, it's not too late. They can still switch it, their votes. They can I, still... I did know the Caterpillar won best in show last year. Like it, it's. Yeah. It is a gorgeous ship. It has that dream of like the sides opening up, the dragonflies launching out. Like once we get you know, some like sweet tractor beam gameplay going in of hauling in stuff into those Una big tete. open gaping mouths just hungry for loot. No, simplemente están haciendo un show en directo, la gente está votando a través del chat de cuáles na eh, qué naves son. O sea, es, es, al final es un poco repetir un poco el plato que ya está puesto en la web, ¿no? De, de repetir las votaciones. Eh, un poco lo que hice yo de, el otro día, de, de hacer los versus, pero de otra manera, ¿no? De todas maneras... Eh... De, de todas maneras, bueno, o sea, vamos a verlo, a ver qué se cuece, porque se supone que al final los ganadores de que salgan de aquí, o de alguna manera, los, los seleccionados iban a tener algún tipo de, de premio, ¿no? Y sobre todo para ver eh, si nos cuentan algo de, de esos eh, de esas cositas que decían que se iban a poner a la venta las naves, o eh, goodies, ¿no? Que decían que iban a poner. Vamos a ver. Uh, size matters when it comes to these ships, and people seem to vote uh, size of these things more than... Uh, almost anything else, which is a little disappointing to me, but maybe we'll turn, maybe we'll we'll change some minds, we'll turn some heads today uh, with our voting. We're moving on to day three, uh, day three, which is which voting is currently going on in on the website right now. It is Gladius versus Defender. Gladius versus Elwin, la Defender. You're starting this off. Who should pasa aquí? Gladius or Defender? Oh man, this one was a hard one for me because I really like sort of what what was done 
on the artistic side for the defender i think it has a really unique interior but in terms of gameplay i think the gladius is a stronger choice uh, i think it's a better fighter um, it's got a better arsenal está diciendo qué dice qué dice está diciendo que tiene mejor arsenal y, y mejores capacidades de combate la, la gladius que la defender está loco <laughs> no ha jugado al juego el desgraciado <laughs> no is my pick for who should win and that was really just a personal preference between the two ships it didn't go much deeper than that the gladius goes way back uh, to being my favorite ship back when i was in qa um, and it's still um, up there as my favorite dogfighter it's hard it's hard to it's hard to battle against the gladius because it's it's one of the signature ships of squadron 42 we, we know that it's it seems to be the test bed for so many new features like we we've we've already seen an isc the work on the physicalized dashboard, you know, starts with the Gladius, the 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 weapon rack that we've seen it goes in the Gladius. Uh, a lot, many of the new flight model changes always start with the Gladius. The que dice que es difícil escoger, o sea, enfrentar un, una Gladius contra otra nave porque la, la Gladius es como una especie de de seña de identidad de, de la casa en el sentido de que es una nave en la que se hacen todos los cambios, eh, como por ejemplo la inclusión de del rack de misiles en la parte lateral, etcétera, ¿no? You just took pretty much everything of that away, what I wanted to say. Um, I mean, there is no there is no discussion. It is the most beautiful ship that we have in the game. It just looks like the, oh, the really? prototypic fighter. Um, yes, it is the most beautiful ship. There is no discussion there. Um, <laughs> it is really great in space. Um, Carrick, it's Carrick would like to have a word with you. <clears throat> fine. Uh, but it's also really great in, in atmosphere because of the wings, right? And it's, it is the test pack for new technology. So um, I am a little biased there because I worked... Well, I spend a lot of time in that in that cockpit uh, during development, but still, I would prefer it uh, for gameplay reasons. So yeah, I'll stay with the Gladius. It's hard to, it's hard to argue with the gull wings too. Like, I'm, I'm a sucker for any any ship with the gull wings. Will, what was your pick? Who should win? Uh, Gladius, Gladius all the way. Um, and it was hard for me because I love the Defender too. Like it's such a cool looking xeno ship it has those really sexy curves on the inside and when we walk in it it's a unique experience but the gladius for me that cockpit is like as you mentioned is the test bed so it's one of our most refined cockpit experiences claro sí o sea el cockpit de la gladius es uno de los más refinados de, del juego pero en fin and checking out what's happened in the gladius and so i keep going back to it over and over could the gladius be a dark horse favorite to take this do we do we do we, do we think it the community would likes it enough you mean at the very end yeah i i do not think so no okay uh no. in the now in the now we did should in the woodwind uh yogi who did you pick woodwind gladius right. for the same reasons tyler who did you pick woodwind Gladius. Okay. Uh, Will, who did you pick would win? Gladius. Elwin, what were you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> I just think alien ships are cool, man. I thought You're not we would wrong. Be seduced. I thought people would be seduced by just the difference, right? Like just the fact that it's different than all the other ships we have. The Gladius has a fantastic cockpit. And it ah, no, es al revés. O sea, el arsenal lo decía, vale, vale. Al arsenal es al revés. O sea, él decía la... Pero es más de un arsenal contemporáneo. Él defiende la Sí, porque tiene mejor arsenal. Bien, joder, bien. No tenemos tan pocos arsenales. Pero tú lo has dicho, chavales. Me he equivocado. Dice que la defender tiene mejor arsenal, claro. No puedes nunca descontar... You can never discount the alien tax. It's that the alien ships always have that extra edge defender, of, of cool defender. to them just because they're Pero different de calle, and unique and, 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 and stand so far apart from all the other ships. But uh, in the voting for this uh, for today's show, the Gladius is running away with it. Uh, it remains to be seen how the voting on the website will go for this day. So you can actually go vote right now on the robertspaceindustries.com website for this particular battle uh, today. Uh, will you... Be in line with our Gladius predictions. Can the, will the Gladius be the dark horse that can that can go up against uh, what could be the Carrick in the in, in the semifinals, or will you succumb to the alien tax and choose the Defender? It's all up to you. We are moving on to day four now. Day four is the Eclipse versus the Hammerhead. Now this bueno, one is in this is our Hammer. only Aegis versus Aegis uh, option. Tyler, start us off. Who wins? Who should win? The Eclipse or the Who Hammer? Should Who should I win? Think that, I think that the Eclipse should win. Uh, I think a lot of people would agree with me that the the cockpit uh, is is like the cool, has the, the coolest opening animation uh, and, and view. I just love the way it feels when you're sitting in an Eclipse. All right. Yeah. 
Piensa que debería ganar la Eclipse, pero como te sientas en el copy, la sensación que da y todo. No, no es correcto. Creo que el Hammerhead debería ganar. Because it's uh, due to the large amount of turrets, um, it just has like a lot of like multi crew potential, and um, when all of them firing at the same time, it's just it's just grand. It looks fantastic. How do you argue against those turrets, man? It's it is it is just ridiculous. Que la, las, it's not las just... turretas permiten permiten hacer un, un gameplay, o sea, da mucha opción al gameplay, no, de a, a la multi tripulación. Y, y que debería ganar la Hammerhead, dice. Y, y dice, ¿cómo, ¿cómo podéis ir contra esas torretas? Dice Jared, ¿no? Other people should vote for the Eclipse as well. Um, that would be great. Thank you. Oh, wait, no. Actually, oh, never mind. Can't say Will. <laughs> Will. Will. You're doing fine. Win? Keep carry on. <laughs> Who should win, Will? I, I, Hammerhead. And, and that was 100% based on that in-game poster of uh, the Hammerhead. The Jaws, yes. I love it. That's... That just sways me. Yeah. Ellen, Dice que la Hammerhead por el póster este que hay que parece yeah, el, una, un anuncio de un tiburón, ¿no? De que se ve el, ahí en el, como saliendo hacia arriba en azul todo. Guns guns, so I went for the Hammerhead. Oh no. Oh, so Tyler, your odd person out here. You got three people yeah. being very clear about the Hammerhead. I will say in the community <laughs> voting though, the Eclipse is making a respectable showing. So uh, for for the for, for the community voting that's going on, I can just say uh, this is a referendum against Tyler. It's it's very on brand for the Eclipse to kind of sneak up on you. That's right. In the voting. It is. Um, it, it, I, come on. Vote Eclipse. It, it, I'll it, take it, my shirt off. It's hard because it's obvious the Hammerhead has so has, you know, all that potential with the with the uh With the uh, turrets, it has a, 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 a really cool militaristic interior uh, by Aegis that is very evocative of things like the Idris, <laughs> and it is a big ship. It's one of the biggest ships that you can currently fly uh, in the persistent universe today. So it's got all those things going for it. Um, look, I'm look, I'm looking at it. I'm vamping right now as we look at the eclipse slowly oh. inching up. Will can the eclipse? Work? Can it's like I'm drawing this out a little bit to see if you can, if we can just redeem Tyler. We can just do this, uh, uh, Yogi. Who who did you vote should win or would win? Right? Um, would win. Yeah, no so way. I actually, I actually voted for the eclipse uh, mainly because it's um, it's a ship which you can use alone, and it has very interesting, a very interesting shape. Um, I disagree with the cockpit though. It's I don't think the visibility is good because of this uh, thing at the top um, of this um, panel there. And But other okay. than that, vale, dice que además okay, eh, este que es piloto everybody... dice que, que no está de acuerdo con lo de la cabina y todo eso porque dice que quita mucha visibilidad la parte de arriba, ¿no? It's it's very agile for its size, and um, just the role that it plays is really um, really important in uh, in uh, anti capture battles. So, Yogi, you were the only person who said the Eclipse would win. Everybody else uh, stuck to their guns with the, with the Hammerhead. Tyler, <laughs> so it was after arguing the Eclipse, still went, yeah, the Hammerhead's going to win. Yeah, But it looks know. like at the end of our voting, the Eclipse is going to win. Are in no, yo creo que va a ganar so, Yogi, también, ¿eh? you, get, you get that correct <laughs> prediction there. Way to pull it out. Están diciendo ahí de que al final, la Hammerhead sí, pero al final, hoy por hoy, en el, dentro de lo que es el juego, la, la Eclipse está muy fuerte, llama mucho la atención. Turned it around. Yogi, is, yeah, Yogi successfully predicted the, uh, the Eclipse. Let's move on to Day 5. Day 5, we've got, we've, we've got an interesting one. This one was... Looking at your predictions, this one was surprisingly divisive to me. So I want to spend some time uh, discussing how this works. Uh, constellation. Yogi, we're back to Hostia, you. Starting things off. Constellation sure. or Cutlass? Who did you pick? So, should win. Dios. Should win. I picked the Cutlass um, because it's a very versatile ship. Again, it is like um, it is a small ship that has already multi-crew functionality. It has a turret. It has a, a co-pilot seat, and you can use it for like um, hauling some cargo. En resumidas cuentas está diciendo que escoge la Kuldas por debido a su, a, su, a su pequeño tamaño y que a pesar de su pequeño tamaño tiene una funcionalidad multicru con su torreta, su asiento de copiloto. Constellation. So I went with the Cutlass. It's also like I, I spent a lot of time developing for this thing when we did the turret updates. Um, it's the easiest ship to spawn and sit in a turret right away and only having one turret, which is great for debugging. Okay. Will, who should win? I mean, I mean, that's an interesting point that a lot of people have the colors. I mean, meta meta gaming this. Do you think people are more likely to vote for ships that are inside their fleet over something that they aspire towards or don't actually have as part of their one of their ships? Interesting. Uh, I, I voted for the Cutlass Black for many of the same reasons that Yogi said. Uh, when I'm heading out for a mission, 
it's very much my go-to. You know, it's got the cargo room. It can hold its own in a fight. It's also scrappy. It gets it done, you know, anytime you need it. Claro, este dice que más o menos como el otro, que por las cualidades que ha dicho y aparte de porque cuando vas a hacer una misión es la nave que escogería, ¿no? Que simplemente vas a hacerla y tienes tu, tu espacio de carga es rápida. Aparte te comentaba yo hoy que tiene el, eh, el acceso más rápido a torreta del juego. Que en realidad el acceso más rápido a torreta del juego es la vanguard. Pero bueno version of the Cutlass, it would have been the Constellation that I think should have won. But at the moment, the current Cutlass has such an aggressive posture when it's sitting on the landing pad. To me, I just think it looks awesome. If you're in this dark landing pad with maybe some mist or smoke or something like that with the headlights on, it just looks very intimidating. Um, so I like that feel. So for me, I think it should be the Cutlass Black. Okay. Tyler, bring it home. This one's easy. Should be the Cutlass. I'm skipping ahead. It will be the Cutlass. That's just... It's, it's, this is a community favorite, and I have access to the analytics to support that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's, let's talk about the Constellation, though. The Constellation, uh, I don't think we'd... Obviously, everybody was in agreement. We look, we look, at, the, uh, we look at the voting. The community is in, the, is, is in agreement. But the Constellation is still rocking about 36% of the vote here. What reasons could people be voting for the Constellation? <laughs> What, what's great about the constellation that that that, that could make it win? Um, I mean that that drop down storage area, like pulling the vehicle into it, is pretty sweet when you get down on a planet. Um, I mean, it's four like big main thrusters on the side are kind of iconic, and I think you know I've had a lot of my earlier first multiplayer experiences in Star Citizen on a constellation in Andromeda, and there's a lot of good feelings there about the crew getting together on that ship and it's small it's compact it's you know it, it's focused but it still has enough room for you and your friends to go out and have adventures so i like that a lot of folks in the chat are saying that the connie needs a rework Sí. Uh, it, it, it is one of the original five that was introduced back in the kickstarter campaign uh it's got the RSI name on it. I mean, that's that's got CR's uh, you know name on it. It's the the, the Connie is was meant to be this multi-role uh, 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 superiority you know ship that it's got the parasite craft and the and the missile arrays and the turrets and does a little bit of of so many things. Uh, if the if the Cutlass is winning today, would you bet against the Constellation in the long run? Though I mean, is it, is it always going to is it always going to be second fiddle to the to the Cutlass, or do, do you think there's room for for some improvement there in the future without committing to anything? Because we're none of us are the people that would be doing the work. Yeah, Alwyn, can you confirm if the Kai is getting a rework on stream? <laughs> <laughs> I can't talk about future no. planned work. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I mean, there's a couple of design elements in this ship that I that I think could be improved. Like me personally, I'm not the hugest fan of having both turret entrances in the same spot. So players kind of have to wait to get in and out. Um, but I do think it's really cool that it has its own kind of dedicated dock for the Merlin. And I think in the long run, I think the constellation will start getting a little bit more love just because it does give you a little bit more space to bring more people to be able to actually do things on the ship while you're... Están preguntando básicamente si, si hay espacio para mejorar o si se si va a hacer un futuro rework de, de, de la Constellation. Dice, este sería uno de los representantes del equipo de naves, dice que no puede hablar de eso eh, ahora mismo, pero dice que definitivamente hay mucho espacio para, para mejor, así que en, en, a largo plazo que probablemente la, la Constellation la acabe ganando a la, a la Cutlass. Yo creo que el, el mayor problema que tiene ahora mismo la Constellation, eh, tal como está, eh, ya quitando no lo del rework, es que las torretas son una porquería. O sea, debería tener dos torretas con dos armas de tamaño tres cada una y tener la misma visibilidad que por lo menos tiene una, las torretas de una, de una Kudla Black. Porque al final eh, la, la visibilidad que tiene es muy limitada, ni siquiera permite o sea, ni siquiera permite apuntar hacia adelante porque como están levantadas, vale, están levantadas sobre la nave un poco... No, no permite apuntar los objetivos que tiene delante. Es, es muy, muy triste. O sea, para, para las dos torretas que tiene. O sea, es muy desaprovechada, ¿no? Of the ship slightly changes. And that looks just really, really badass. Um, I had this, um, this one experience on the, uh, on the Phoenix, which has like these, these side windows, right? And it, and it just stood there. And uh, David was in the front cockpit. And he just uh, turned on the weapons. And suddenly, like, this, this big missile array would, like, right in front of me would get out. It was like, oh, wow, that is so cool. Um, and the... 
Andromeda does that as well. So it just, I mean, you cannot see it from the from the inside, but it it does these things. So from the outside, the whole ship, sh uh, the shape changes and looks really threatening. And this is what I really like about Andromeda. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's one of those things where it's like, I, I don't have any inside information on this. There, there, I don't have any information on everywhere, and that's not what we're talking about. I'm just talking about from a, sh for, from a ship that's as important to the uh, iconography of, of Star Citizen as the Connie. I, I just think, I just wouldn't bet against it uh, in the long run. Today, on this day in 2020, I think, yeah, I'd agree the Cutlass, the Cutlass is the clear winner. But I just, in the long run, when all is said and done, I, I just wouldn't bet against the Connie. Uh, we, have bias, the, yeah, we have a biased host right now who's contributing to. <laughs> No, no, this is... Sí, bueno, está diciendo Escolando que ahora mismo pues, está de acuerdo en que la Cutlass es la, la nave que, que parte, pero, pero que en un, eh, al tiempo pues, la, la Constellation le gustaría que acabase retomando puestos. Además, por el, por el hecho de que bueno, es la, la, la nave que lleva. Es una nave icónica con el Kickstarter y todo eso, y además pues, lleva el nombre de Chris Robos en ella, etc. Tiene un, una, historia de, de, una serie de historias y alrededor. Pero por las the, the mismas razones, I mean, I, I wouldn't... I wouldn't want to uh, estimate what the what the community really 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 likes about the ship compared to the Cutlass, but um, I was I was going for it. It's 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 a very interesting ship. So yeah. yeah. Also, the Cutlass was one of the final four uh, last mm -hmm. year. So so you know there, there there could be a weighted vote for the consulate when that when this comes up uh, uh, in two days. I think there could be a weighted vote towards the consulation to maybe get it some more attention. Or, you know, for for whatever the rewards are. I, I actually don't know what the rewards are for this year's ship showdown. <laughs> I was about to say, but I actually don't know. Uh, Will, who did you uh, who did you predict? Cutlass. Cutlass. Bueno, están haciendo la selección. Cutlass, Cutlass, Cutlass. Pero al final eh, lo que están hablando es, bueno, no dicen, no aseguran nada de reward ni nada, pero no lo niegan. Evidentemente, si no lo niegan, pues es que eh, es esperado, ¿no? Un, un reward de, de la Constellation, de la serie Constellation. Y yo creo que también hay muchas cosas que faltan por meter, ¿no? Con el tema todo de la carga, que va a ganar mucha importancia, también con el inventario físico de poder meter cosas adentro, ¿no? Al final va a cambiar mucho lo que es la percepción de la gente de esa nave, igual que, por ejemplo, de las Vanguard también, ¿no? 16 Aegis has five ships in the Swiss 16, but coming in at number two was a surprise to me. The Misk with three ships. They, they've got the uh, the Reliant, the Prospector, and what we'll discuss later uh, as the Razor. Uh, Will between the Avenger and the Reliant, who should win? Uh, the Reliant. I was real happy to see it in the Swiss 16. Hombre, it, it, I think it's, claro, uh, it's a ship that should get a little more de calle. attention on it. Um, I remember back when we were first kind of brainstorming the Reliant and going off this idea that Misk had this early uh, trade deal with the, the Xion. And so we had said that they started using Xion thrusters in the Freelancer, but this was the next evolution. And so taking that idea of Xion verticality and applying it to a human ship was so interesting to me. And so it has that amazing transformation with the cockpit just floating in the middle there and it's kind of got this more like scientific like thinking man ship edge to it it's a little bit different Mira, aquí yo creo que también es otro caso de bueno está diciendo que está flipando en plan de rollo de porque claro la tecnología Xi'an y cómo se pone en vertical y todo eso no al final yo creo que esta nave también es un poco a la Avenger y la Relin ahora mismo le pasa un poco lo que le pasa al, a la Constellation y a la Cutlass probablemente no y es que ahora mismo la, la Avenger es mucho más útil en el juego con la Relin. La Relin está muy mal, no hay blindajes, no hay esa necesidad de tener una eficiencia de combustible que, que, que podamos necesitar en ese futuro. Tampoco está implementada las mecánicas de carga para considerar si es una opción interesante ir o no ir en, en esa nave. Y realmente el precio que tienes es, es que es, no, 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 no merece. O sea, incluso es mejor una Piscis que, que una... Pero sin duda, vamos, una Piscis que una... Que una Relian, ¿no? Además, estamos hablando de que la Avenger tiene cama y la, y la, y la Relian no tiene cama. Um, kind of like the flying eyeballs. Um, I like the way they rotate. I don't know, there's just a lot of things I like about this ship. I like the overall silhouette. Um, yeah, I definitely think it should win. All right, Tyler, tell them why they're wrong. <laughs> the, uh, the Avenger Titan is a community classic. I think it's the ship I see most flying in the verse. I think that uh, it's accessible. Um, it's a nice all-rounder. Um, it's a little penguiny. I think it's a no-brainer. I'm going with the Avenger Titan should win. You went with the Avenger Titan should win. Yes. All right, Yogi. Um, yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm of the same opinion here. Uh, I think the Avenger Titan is just a, a nice all-rounder. It has like 
some internal capacity, um, and it looks it looks just really sleek from every angle that you can think of. Um, and yeah, I'll, I think a lot of players like it. So I would say the Titan. Al final, the Titan is a mini cup. The Avenger is a good-looking ship, man. It's it was one of, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was one of Nate Deersley's first ships for the for the project. <laughs> Uh, back yeah, right, it yeah. was it was like uh was it 1.0 it was like the end of 2014 i think it was like right after i joined yeah uh, it's it, a classic and then it had that it had the the, the rework uh, a couple years ago that made it even better um I, i've always been enthralled with the with the uh as a, one of my favorite movies of all time is Blues Brothers. So having uh, the first version had the the faded police decals on it, like it used to be a, <laughs> like an old police cruiser. That that made me fall in love with it. Uh, it. It also occupies this very weird place where it's kind of a starter, but it's not. It, like it wasn't listed as one of the starter ships, but it's been available for pledge since almost the beginning of the of the project, and 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 it's one of those evergreen ships that are always available. So it, it's kind of grown into the role of a, of a pretty solid uh, a starter there and i just uh i don't know when i when i look at this whole thing and i mean i'm, I'm not part of this contest i'm just offering my things i can't shut up uh i think the avenger could actually go all the way on this thing but that's my thing so who did we pick would win you will what was yeah, your pick final, for, for uh, win? Que es, the avenger. avenger is a starter very solid and yes the avenger Oh, yeah. so, so 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 you went across purposes. You, you rooted. You're rooting for both of you are rooting for the Reliant, but in yeah. your heart of hearts, you're like, yeah, no, the community is going to choose the Avenger, Tyler. Yeah, the Avenger. The Avenger, Yogi. <laughs> well, uh, well, this not is the awkward. Avenger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I actually went with the Reliant uh, because it looks very very different to other ships. Like uh, myself personally, I like like this really like classic science like sci-fi spaceships that we grew up like from Star Wars or Battlestar Galactica and so on. Eh, and the Reliant sí, Core is, verdad, is something completely different. It, it, it looks amazing la, la, la when it is land. La, la Rally Tan is very good, eh, que conste. It's very good because it has a space for a cage, you can take another type, you can take arms, it has two camas. Eh, la Rally Tan is genial. It eh, can offer an experience of combat interesting and it's a mini Vanguard. Vale? In that sense, it's a mini mini Vanguard. Eh, la de ciencia y eso, pues habrá que verla, tiene buena pinta. Yo creo que la, la, o sea, la cagada de, de la, de la Relian de carga es que no tiene cama, o sea, es una cagada. Bueno, que no tiene cama y que no tiene esa capacidad, o sea, que justifique su compra, porque al final eh, la Titan tiene la misma capacidad de carga que la Relian Core. Entonces, si aún tuviese, pues, por lo menos un poco más de carga o algo más, necesita algo más, ¿no? Evolución de that, um, right. which is really cool. I, I think, I think the Reliance gonna grow. I think once planetary atmosphere comes more online and being able to reorient the ship wings, um, as it is to address like wind shear and stuff like that, will be real interesting. So, I do think it is one to watch in the future. But right now, the Avenger might might take it. All right. Well, we are almost at the end here. We're moving on to day seven, and what I think. Claro, estaba diciendo al final de que la Relian, pues al final eh, puede que mejore con con el tema todo ese de, de atmósfera y demás eh, cuando gire las alas, pero al final eh, eso no puede competir contra una Titan y su forma es mucho más aerodinámica, ¿no? Two dropships. Uh, who, who do you pick? All right. Well, so look, um, I worked on one of these two ships, uh, being the Prowler. And there's a lot of things I really love about the Prowler, a lot of things that we did that I think are really, really cool. Uh, but ultimately, I do think that the Valkyrie probably should win. Huh. And the reason for that comes down to purely gameplay. And mm -hmm. here, let me point out a couple of things, right? One, I like that the uh, Valkyrie has enough space for you to bring in some ground equipment, other vehicles. Yeah. vehicles. Uh, as a dropship, if what you... Claro, aquí está diciendo de que por razones de gameplay debería ganar la Valkyria eh, frente a la Prowler porque puedes de desplegar un vehículo y tal. Yo acabo de decir una cosa, si es por razones de gameplay actual, eh, si tú quieres hacer un despliegue de tropas, realmente debería ganar la Prowler porque ahora mismo eh, la Prowler precisamente tiene una señal más baja, no puede ser detectada por una eclipse, te ahorra muchísimos problemas, incluso si quieres hacer misiones de piratería, de piratería en atmósfera ahora mismo está yendo muchísimo más rápida. Y si vas a tener como una B única, una de las dos, pues sí, la Valkyria, pero realmente si las enfrentas en plan de cuál me compro porque tengo otras naves, pues la Prowler yo creo que eh, hoy mismo, hoy en día, es, es mucho más 
eficiente en el verso que, que la Valkyria. Al fin y al cabo, si tú quieres hacer algo de carga en la Valkyria, no lo haces en una Valkyria, lo haces en otra nave, ¿no? Sexier ship. The startup animations, the silhouette. Uh, it's just... Artistically, I, I, I would vote the Prowler. However, uh, I also went with the Valkyrie should win. Um, just for gameplay reasons, I think that if you're going to be a dropship, being able to bring some more supplies, vehicles, um, I mean, you're, you're equipped and you're ready to go. And I think that that uh, outdoes the, the hover mechanics of the Prowler. So Valkyrie it is for me. Did you go with the... Yeah, I'm looking at the list of, sí, claro, la verdad. Uh, uh, o sea, dice, dice otra vez uh, Tyler que... Um, I emailed you pero... at 3:24 p.m. yesterday, day seven. Pero al, al final es eso, o sea, al final hoy mismo el hacer un despliegue, o sea, llevas a, a 20 tíos a 20 tíos a bordo de, para desplegar, vamos a poner que va full, 20 tíos a bordo. Eh... Pff, hoy en día no puedes jugarte la que esos 20 tíos se coman un torpedo, porque se va todo. Ya, ya veremos, ya veremos de cara al futuro, ¿no? Ya veremos de cara al futuro lo que pasa, pero. Sorry, I don't know what just happened. De cara al futuro, quizás la Valkyrie se desarrolle un poco más, pero bueno. All right, uh, Yogi, who should I'm win? I'm with the I'm with the Valkyrie as well. Uh, there was this fun thing uh, which I had found out about the ship. So when I when we were working on the turret updates, right, we knew about the side guns. I mean, the side mini guns, they're already great. Like you sit in the remote seat, and then you can just like yo, you so have yo, a really <coughs> wide angle where you can. Eh, este también va con la Valkyrie. Le encanta lo que son las armas que tiene la vital. Yo entiendo. Entiendo el, o sea, entiendo el planteamiento de, de ellos, ¿no? Porque no quizás no, no pongan vistas en lo que en lo que ahora mismo está el, el juego, cómo está, ¿no? Pero definitivamente, si queréis eh, ahora mismo compraros una nave in-game, estamos hablando, para hacer despliegue, para dedicarlo a despliegue, sin duda eh, ir por una Prowler. O sea, no vayáis por una Valkyria porque no, no, no merece. O sea, ahora mismo no merece. En el futuro, pues sí, en el futuro será distinto seguramente, pero ahora mismo no, no merece. Os lo digo por, por experiencia, lo habéis visto en, en mis directos y tal, que hemos ido con la hemos ido con la Prowler de Reggae y, y luego hemos ido en, en la Valkyria y, y al final con la, con la Prowler tienes la ventaja tremenda de que si estás buscado no, no te van a tirar un, un torpedo, tienen que acercarse para eso y y eso te da mucha más versatilidad, ¿no? O sea, mucha más versatilidad, mucha más supervivencia, ¿no? Versatilidad. The Tavarin styling is amazing to me. I love the air shield tech. I love the cockpit and the unique uh, control. The way that uh, that you steer the ship is just beautiful to me. And and I think while while the Valkyrie has that traditional like ground assault feel to it, like With that air shield tack, if you're going to be boarding a spaceship, like you've just like shot out like a, a javelin's thrusters, sí, and it's floating there, and you there and you swoop in with your prowler totalmente. and your guys just float out into the cold black to do a boarding action, I think. Stuff. He gets to use like fancy narrative verbiage. Eh, la diferencia de personas entre una Valkyria y una Harlock no, o sea, y una y una Prowler no es tan grande, eh, Harlock. La Valkyria lleva muchísima peña, pero la Prowler también, eh. So, looks like the, uh, the community agrees with you. Uh, the no. Community's broken on the, on the Valkyrie. Who did you pick uh, a should win? Who did you pick should win, Owen? Yeah, it makes me sad. I, I wish I could have said the Prowler, uh, just because there's a lot of things we did on that that I really love. But I ultimately think that yeah, the Valkyrie, the gameplay it provides is just superior. I think. It's, but 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 it's we, not too late, community. Vote Prowler. But, there's but, still time. Yes, please vote Prowler. <laughs> but you did pick would win Valkyrie though, didn't you? I I did, but I'm willing to take the L on the point there <laughs> just to get like the victory for the Prowler. <laughs> All right. Tyler, who'd you yeah, he sent you an email this, uh, who'd this you night said would win? I, I was pretty confident, even though I said the Valkyrie should win, I was pretty confident that the aesthetic of the Prowler would push it into being the winner, and I look like I was wrong. Yep. Yeah, you, 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 said, you said the Valkyrie would win. I said that the aesthetic of the Valkyrie would win. Yogi, who'd you say would win? No, I said uh, the Prowler. Sorry, I said the Prowler would win, so I'm losing. Oh, you said the Prowler would win. That's why oh, okay. I did. <laughs> we obviously messed up our scoring on day seven, so JJ's fixing it for me. Yogi, okay. I said Valkyrie, and for the reason that the Prowler has a some aesthetics that make it look really, really mean from the inside and the outside. Um, I mean, have you gone in there? I mean, there's this ladder which you go up, and it's so twisted and weirdly angled. It's hey, amazing, well, but also when 
when I am in the ship, I feel actually more evil than I think I am. <laughs> and I and I would think that the community kind of like has the same uh, the same feelings towards that ship. It is it is. Sí, a ver, eh, yo la, la votación la votación cerró que, que ya dije que iba a hacer de las naves y iba a ser basada en el gameplay de ahora, o sea, el, el gameplay que se ofreciera ahora, ¿no? Porque todas las naves que están además eh, están flight ready y pues esa es la idea. Y ahora mismo el, la Valkyria no, no no sirve, o sea, no no sirve, es que no, no sirve porque te la juegas. Si realmente, o sea, para hacer, o sea, para hacer carga vas a utilizar otra cosa, para y para ir las torretas, o sea, para ir las torretas, para ir a hacer despliegue, pues la la prole está es muy superior ahora mismo, pero muy muy superior. Uh, last but not least, we are moving on to our final our final vote and perhaps the biggest mismatch uh, of this entire contest for day eight here. We have got the origin origins only entry in the in the contest and Miss Third the Razor. Uh, Tyler, start us off. Uh, All right. Uh, the Razor va a volver a ganar. O sea, va a volver a ganar una nave pequeña en la 890 Jump. Ojo. I think the 890 Jump has had its ojo, time to shine. Joran, Yacht Club. Porque ya pasó con la Dragonfly. Forgive me. I love y'all. I think it's time for the Miss Razor. I think I think that's what we should go with. So go ahead and vote that. And if you do, maybe we'll um maybe we'll do like a giveaway. I got stickers. I'm here to bribe you. Microtech. We got Pico stickers. Vote the Razor. I don't know how fair that is. Yogi. Nobody set win? any rules. You just invited me. It's totally unfair. <laughs> um, so no, uh, so I, I think the 890 should win um, because in terms of like role-playing game for Star Citizen, this is one of the best ships you can actually get. Um, at, a couple of months ago, we did like a, a play test. Um, and uh, I remember uh, Dave Coles and me were like walking through the 890 and just going through, uh, <clears throat> again, like... Uh, like the 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 eating space like where, where I can sit down and have like dinner and we just sat across each other and took like a <clears throat> and just like thought hey how cool would it be just to eat here right and then you can just go up and sit somewhere on a couch and gaze out there at the stars there's like not a lot of gameplay there yet but it kind of like communicates the dream that star citizen is really really well and you can just get lost in it and um, So I think this is why the 890 should win, just just for that kind of experience. I mean, the... Bueno, en resumidas cuando está hablando de que el otro día pensé que podía comer delante del PC, supongo que se referirá, y, y sentarse en una mesa de la 890 a comer en la vida real, y, y, de, y pues que, que digamos que proporcionaría la capacidad, que ahora mismo no hay mucho que play, pero que proporcionaría la capacidad en, la, en el futuro de, de, de perderse ¿no? en, en lo que es dentro del juego, ¿no? de, total, de una total inmersión that we put into the razor of misc trying to achieve more tying into the Xion, a, a little bit of the endurance racing that we we gave for them that like the the Xion were kind of doing leman style like really like long races and the razor would maybe be a little more suited for that than the straightaway more traditional Murray Cup. And so the idea of humans starting to get into the Xion style racing and the MISC, you know, designing the Razor a little bit to appeal to that was very interesting to me. And I like how it looks. And Razor. All yeah. right. Elvin. Yeah, so I ended up, uh, first of all, I was like, how, these are completely different. But for me, definitely the Razor. I just think aesthetically the lines are beautiful. I love like the obvious F1 influences on it. Um, and I'm a fan of seeing as many kind of racing ships as we can get into the game. So if we can get more of them in there and make that more popular by getting the Razor to win, I'm all for it. Um, I like the way they also integrated uh, the Xi'an tech that the way uh, Will mentioned, but from an artistic standpoint, it's it's It harkens back to also the way... Entre, entre este y el artista están echando flores a la, a la Razor diciendo que, bueno, que, que le, le seduce mucho la idea de que de esa cap, supuesta capacidad que quizás la Razor tenga de hacer eh, rallies de una duración más larga por aquello de, bueno, ya sabéis, eficiencia de motores Xi'an y demás. Y este está comentando, Erwin está comentando de que le encanta el, el diseño de, de la Razor y cómo se han adaptado, cómo se han adaptado esos, esos motores Xi'an a, a la Razor, ¿no? a la, a la, a la, cómo Miss ha adaptado esos motores a la nave, ¿no? por, por cuestión de, o sea, al final, el resultado final ¿no? y todas esas ideas de, de lo relacionadas con ese tema. For Woodwin. A90. Yeah, I chose the A90 as well. All right, I think I might be winning this whole thing. Yogi, what did you pick would win? 
Uh, the 890. Uh, it has a basketball court. That's just amazing. Tyler was the only one to double so up I will on say, this one. I, I just recently, I was playing Star Citizen the other night. I tweeted a video of this, which some people may have seen. But I took the Razer LX the, with the white paint job, right up with the white snow of Microtech, and I flew it real low. And with this landing gear out, I slid across the flows, the frozen ocean or lake. And it was just such a cool experience that it stuck with me. And I don't think that would work with an 890 jump at all. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to try. See you try, though, yeah. Oh, we'll see. All right, so we're, we're, we're tabulating the score. I want to I wanna verify real quick just because we had some issues with, with the uh, uh, your, your picks for Woodwind. De, de Tyler, what did you pick Woodwind for the, uh, between the Prowler, the Prowler and the, the, the Valkyrie? I picked the Razor. I don't think it's going to be like 80. Between the Prowler and the Valkyrie? Oh, sorry. Prowler and Valkyrie. Uh, hold on, let me pull it up. Uh, should win Valkyrie, will win Prowler. Okay. Uh, uh, will, what was your vote? Double Prowler. You, you did double Prowler? Okay. Uh, uh, Elwin, what was your vote? Double Valkyrie. Double Valkyrie? I see that there was wrong there. So uh, Elwin, had, Elwin had that there. Uh, all right, so let's give him the X there. And then uh, Yogi, what was your should and would? Uh, double Valkyrie. You had, you had double Valkyrie. So you, you actually had that there. That's why I asked. We had the entries for day seven incorrect. So we are correcting that now. Uh, while JJ tallies up the score, uh, let's jump ahead. We've got a few minutes left. At the end of all this, for, 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 for extra points at the end, who, 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 what, what's going what's gonna to take this whole thing? Uh, Yogi, we'll, we'll, we'll go back to the beginning here. We'll start with you. Uh, at the end of this year's Ship Showdown 2020, who's our final winner? I'd say Valkyrie. Valkyrie. For all the reasons, yeah. Uh, yeah. ¿Qué es lo que va a ganar al final de, really cool. del Ship Showdown? O sea, ¿cuál será el ganador final? Dice que Valkyrie. If Valkyrie's going to take this whole thing, because it's really cool. Yeah, it's 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 very versatile. It it looks great. It has like um, a lot to do for the for the uh, in terms of multi crew aspects. Um, yeah, it's just like the perfect dropship for me. Um, so yeah, I think the Valkyrie should win. All right, Will. The end of this. Who's taken this whole thing this year? I think the Cutlass Black should win. Um, just because it is that workhorse ship. It is. I keep going back to it when I load into the game. I try the new one. I go into Gladius to check out the new future, Dice que cuando features entra and then when I'm ready to go. Naves, pero que si siempre acaba yendo la cuddle, ¿no? It's black. And yeah, I can bring a friend. I can do a cargo mission. I can take out a bounty hunting uh, target. Like it's just, it's just my ship. All right, Elwin. So I want to steal Will's answer. But I want to change the ship to the Carrick <laughs> because everything he just said applies to the Carrick in my view. But in addition, you can bring another ship along with you, mm. and that is just super fun. Claro, so I think the Carrick should win. Pero que además puedes llevar otra I think it will win. Yeah. En, I, think I mean, I don't. What other ship? I can't think of what other ship on the list can carry. I mean, I guess the 890 jump, but I don't know. I think the Carrick would beat out the 890 jump. Tyler. I voted that the vehicle or ship that should win is um, the Great Cat Buggy, but it didn't make it into the top 16, but I felt like it deserved its time to shine, and I was a bit let down by the lack of submissions. We do have it right here. I have my, yeah. my Great Cat Buggy right there. I think it's underrated. I think it flies. If you drop it out of a ship, I think it's eligible but i did indeed choose no that the character will win. Will win. i think it's the year of the character i think we know it i think it's going to happen yeah, I just can anything beat the Carrick? i mean that's the that that that's the thing is the Carrick just a, a walk on this it, lo, looking at the brackets right now we know it's next round the Carrick is facing the caterpillar the caterpillar won last year is the caterpillar still a strong enough contender to beat the Carrick? No, I, I, I think given think so. I, I think just given about the, the the vote that we saw with the prospector having way more votes than I than I expected it to, uh, I don't think the caterpillar is as strong this year as it was last year. Right. Uh, the the next bracket after that it's going to face the winner of the Gladius Defender, which we all think is going to be the Gladius, and the Hammerhead Eclipse, which we all think is going to be the the, the Eclipse. Well, the, 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 the voting actually the voting in the show today was the uh, was the what was it was it the Eclipse? Yeah, it was the Eclipse. So can either the Eclipse 
or the Gladius defeat? Puede la Gladius, porque dice que va a ganar la Gladius y la Eclipse, probablemente. I, Puede yes. ganar la Gladius o la Eclipse y ganar la Carrack, ¿no? I have the Carrack down as my, my will win. I, I think it, it's going to go all the way. I just, I just, I don't know. I just, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't like. Aren't you like obligated to love the character? No, the that, that was done. Ship? That was done. It's this, not this, done. This, this, it doesn't this, expire. This, yeah, it did. It expired the day that ship went out, went live. Well, my, my, no. my, my, my feel to the Carrick, as mandated by YouTube <laughs> comments, is over. I just wait. So, Jared, son, do you, listen do you to me, son. Like the, do you not like the Carrick, Jared? I'm telling you, as your father, that the Carrick will be your favorite ship till the end of time. Okay, listen to my favorite son, Zylo. The Carrick is like the it, yeah is it's like the the New England Patriots. It's like the the Carrick is like the New York Yankees to me. It's it's just it's this it's this dynastic ship that's just fabled and, and destined to win all this stuff. And I just I just I want to see it lose. I just want to <laughs> see it lose. If I'm I, I got to be honest. I just I just I always got to vote against I, I, against the establishment. And, and for me, the Carrick is definitely the establishment. Well, if so you're I'm, feeling confident about it, why don't you grow your beard out until the Carrick loses? <laughs> well, that's only uh, like a week or two. But, uh, uh, no. Can I can I do in a little tangent? Like we just talked about the gray cat buggy Absolutely. for a little bit, and I just was fondly reminiscing about buggy mayhem in Area 18 way back in the day. Oh, yeah. I don't know how many of you remember that fun <sighs> of just walking out into the central square and just getting you mean, creamed by a buggy out of the, nowhere. The Arcourt Plaza when everybody just drove their buggies. Yeah. And just exploded. Oh, actually, there was I just a funny, burning I a funny story everywhere. about that. When we, when we released sí, the module, los tiempos en los que podías ir 18 y pillar un buggy de estos y... You could load directly in. Y zapatear por ahí delante, que antes se podía hacer. Que la verdad es que estaría bien que lo volvieran a poner de alguna manera. Pues es que claro, eso, eso va a tardar. ...around the elevator door that they would come out of. And so the first player, looking back at this now, horrible user experience, maybe we shouldn't have skipped doing this, but the first <laughs> player after we released the patch who came out of that elevator, was the number one person to come into Area 18, all Guilty. five of our buggies slammed into the door in one glorious explosion. I know. I, I, <laughs> and in chat, he just said, like, he was like, what the hell? <laughs> uh, I, I, I will tell you, and you can, and Jake Ross can confirm this, uh, it was actually an errant comment I sent to Jake Ross about, about two months before the patch went live. I said, hey, you've got all this space there. We should put the Grey Cat buggy in Area 18. And he goes, oh, I'll pass it on. And then two months later when the patch comes out, the Grey Cats, the Grey Cats are there. And so I, I, I was there and I watched you in that, in that thing where we started it. And uh, you instantly made it very clear that no idea should ever be listened to that comes from me. Yeah. <laughs> ever. No, I'm not a griefer. We, I was in QA back then. So that means I was supposed to be doing things that I wasn't supposed to be doing. You were so testing a, how mean you could be to other players. Exactly. <laughs> Therefore, we ended up moving the gray cats behind those, uh, whatever. Me están hablando que al final el retiro, o sea, se produjo el retiro del buggy de 18 por los atropellos y demás, ¿no? Folks have been asking, uh, the, these models here are available through, uh, the, uh, through officially licensed through JR Fabrications. Uh, you can check that out. Just Google J uh, JR Design and Fabrications. They don't have a website because this wasn't like a planned spot or anything. But they've got a freelancer and an arrow and a dragonfly and a, uh, and a buggy. And these are, these are all my custom painted. Uh, you have to paint yourself. But uh, they're pretty cool. We like them a lot. And I think they have even more. Uh, like I said, it wasn't a planned thing, so I don't know what they have available. But check them out. Uh, they're very cool. Uh, guys, thank you so much for our inaugural episode of Ship Showdown Live. Uh, I think it went well. I hope you had some fun. Uh, remember, for folks watching uh, at home or at work or in your car or wherever you are, uh, the voting for the official Ship Showdown contest is ongoing live right now on the Robert Space Institute. Well, 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 versus Defender, uh, so you can go and vote for that today and then come back each day over the next week and a half uh, to vote for the day four, the day five, the day six, and so on. Uh, and then they'll be voting for the previous uh, brackets after that. And then ultimately, uh, the winner gets some manner of prize that I'm not aware of, so I can't spoil it. So, wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? Who won today? Yeah. Who, oh, who won? oh, who won today? And what do we get? What's the prizes? We had a three-way tie. Uh, oh, Elwin, gosh. Yogi, and oh, Will be... hey, all had a total there. of nine points. That is baloney. As a tie for second place. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Tyler Wicken stole the show with a total of 13 points. 
That's right. Uh, so Tyler Wicken gets the gets the prize. Uh, the prize. The prize. The prizes were a pizza party for your entire team. Uh, All right. A, a funded by my team and a get out of video free card, which means that uh, you, you, each member of your team has an option for the next time I come. Like, hey, will you please be on this video for something I need or whatever? You have a free get out of free card. That's more. See, that one's worthless. Jared doesn't let me come on video because I just troll him. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that was going to be worth more to Elwin and, and Will and Yogi, uh, but but you stole it from them. So guys, you can be angry with yeah. Tyler for stealing. I would like to say though, if you said that the prize goes to my entire team, yes. I will, I will say that working on the community team, that the entire community is a part of my team. And for that reason, you owe the entire community pizza. And uh, and everybody in chat right now is going to go to Reddit, and they're going to hold you accountable. Okay? Pizza party for the community on Lando. Thank you, everybody. I'll go and upvote now. Oh, he's so relaxed. That's it for this week's episode. This one time, last time only episode of Ship Showdown. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we are going to throw uh, a host array to a Star Citizen streamer that's broadcasting right now. So if you want to, if, if you can join in, that should be starting up in the stream chat uh, any moment now. Uh, we are reading a binary loop, if I'm not mistaken, uh, who, who was an Australian streamer, but I think they relocated to the UK recently. Uh, I haven't been able to keep up, but, but check that out. Um, and, and uh, uh, when you get there, uh, tell them Tyler sucks. Just say Tyler sucks. Just You're doing it again. You're being no, a bully, no, Jared. Nope, nope. <laughs> I can just push a button. You can disappear. And then, and then I can mute you and you can't say anything. Look at Bueno, segundillo, chicos. Eh, venimos ahora con el, con el directillo normal. Cortamos aquí.